Today we're going to be going over some solo quarterback throwing drills that do not require wide receivers. Now this is a common question that we get asked all the time in the comment sections of our videos is, Coach, I don't have any receivers to throw to, how do I work on my throwing skills? So we're going to be giving you a bunch of different quarterback throwing mechanics drills that won't put a ton of mileage on your arm because you're not actually throwing a ball. We're going to be working a lot with a towel. I'll explain the importance of the towel in a second. But again guys, it's stuff that you can do at home, does not require a receiver that will get you better. So why do quarterbacks use the towel? I'm sure some of you have either seen myself work with the towel or maybe other quarterback coaches with their athletes throwing with the towel. A lot of coaches don't even know why the hell they use the towel. They just do it to do it and kill time, but I'm going to explain to you the reason why. So with this towel, most important thing is anytime you're working with a towel, you want to fold this thing to make it as thin as possible. You could use a towel that football players will wear. You could use a dish towel like this, whatever type of towel, but generally about this size and you want to fold it to make it as thin as possible. Then what you're going to do is you're not going to grip the towel like with a full like closed fist, you're going to put your middle finger over the top of the towel and you're going to have these three fingers underneath the towel. So it's almost like a bird. Now the reason why we do that is because the towel works on a concept called extension and also a little bit of something called a wrist flick. So if I were to ask all you quarterbacks watching this, hey, how do I get more spin on the ball? You got to flick your wrist. I'm sure a lot of you would say that. But when you flick your wrist, you want your wrist, elbow and shoulder to be extended. So the towel makes sure that we actually extend because when I flick my wrist on the towel and I extend properly you hear like a whoosh of the towel. If you're doing towel work, which we're about to show you a couple drills with it, and you shorten up your arm and you don't hear the whoosh of the towel, that means we're not doing it right and we're not extending properly. So that's why we use this. And there's a little bit of added resistance on this. It's better than just working with just your hands, okay? So this first drill, and I hope that makes sense. If you guys have more questions about towel work, just post them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer those. I respond to every single comment. So this first drill is gonna be something called a no stride half sequence drill. So you're just gonna stand like this. I recommend doing all these towel drills in front of a mirror if possible so you could watch yourself or at least record yourself so you could watch the film back to see if you're doing anything mechanically. So let's say this cone is like the target that I'm trying to aim towards. You're going to already have your front foot open like you've stepped to the target and you're going to go into your backstroke as a quarterback because as we when we throw guys as quarterbacks when my front foot steps to the target I want to dissociate my upper body and my lower body. That means that I want my shoulders to go back as my foot gets down. So when my shoulders are back here and the foot down my hips can rip through before the shoulders and that like whipping effect helps with that of the towel that extension point because you have a lot of energy going to it and that's how quarterbacks get power so towel work is a great way to work on that sequence again without worrying about the result of the ball so your foot's going to be open your weight's going to be loaded back you're already going to be back here what you're going to think about doing is rotating with your hips and taking this weight on your back leg and transferring it to your front foot so you're going to be here transfer and have the towel shoot on through. Then again, your front foot doesn't move, we stay back, transfer and shoot through. The reason why we do this without the stride is a lot of quarterbacks, when they're throwing, they will push their weight forward when they take a stride. So what happens is their weight goes forward, they can't go back with their shoulders, and they throw all arm. And again, if you do that with the towel, you won't be able to hear the whip of the towel. So we gotta make sure your back foot's under your armpit, your weight's back, your front foot's open, we're here hips bring that through and we shoot through. So I'm gonna show you a couple reps full speed from a different angle and then we'll get into some more drills. Now before we show that full speed example of our no stride drill fellas, if you're a quarterback and you would like a weekly workout schedule that you can follow with on-field drills and gym specific workouts for quarterbacks, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate quarterback training package. What you'll get access to is two months guys of daily workouts. We break down the exact sets and reps. We put it into a schedule like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. All for you guys to improve your skills. We also include video examples of each drill and it's more of just a, a detailed plan I guess you could say. There's only so much you can get from YouTube videos but this is something that you guys can strictly follow to improve your skills as a quarterback. So guys, very first link in that description below. Let's get back to this video. Now this next drill is going to be something called our towel hitch drill. So this is going to be helping you guys with like, you know, maybe like a deep ball where you have to hitch up on a certain throw, maybe like a deep 15 yard dig route where you have to hitch up on a throw, but it works on the mechanics of your hitch. So let's talk about what a hitch is for those of you that maybe don't know what I'm talking about. Set go, let's say I'm taking a three step drop and one hitch. So I go back, one, two, three. When I get to the top of my drop and I'm trying to get some depth, chances are I have a little bit of weight on my front foot. So when I hitch up, I don't want to leave that weight on my front foot. 
my weight's on my front foot, like we talked about in that no stride example. I can't rotate back with my shoulders. I can't dissociate my upper body from my lower body. So when I take a step, it's like I'm gonna be forward, I'm ripping open with my shoulder, and I'm not getting any torque on the ball because my hip is not engaged with the throw. So this drill works on me getting my weight back on a hitch. I take a three-step drop, I hitch up, I wanna rock my weight back to get that foot back underneath me. So it's a three-part drill. So you need a cone or a white line to start you off on this, but you're gonna put your weight on your front foot, and all you're gonna do is replace your feet three times. And on the third replace, we're gonna be throwing with this towel. So your weight's forward, all we're doing is replace one, then you go back. Replace two with the right to the left, then we go back. Then on the third one, we replace and shoot through and throw. That replace, that rock back your weight will help you get more distance on throws, more velocity on throws when a hitch is involved on my drop. Because again, I don't want to go one, two, three, hitch up and leave my weight forward. I don't want to go one, two, three and reach with the left foot, then hitch and keep all my weight on my front side. I want to take a three, replace, get my weight back, and then be able to shoot through, and that's what this drill emphasizes. So we're going to show you a couple full speed examples of that. Now this next sequence is going to be kind of like a pocket footwork, I guess you could say circuit, that you can do with the towel to work on footwork elements of the position and also that same extension and getting throwing reps where focused on your mechanics mainly, not the result of the ball. So we're working three separate pocket movements. You're just gonna start out like so. We're gonna be working C gap pressure and then A gap pressure. So C gap, so guys, let's, for those of you that are beginners, just a quick recap. Obviously you got your center, your guard, and your tackle. The C gap is out outside the tackle. The B gap is between the tackle and the guard, and then the A gap is between the guard and the center. So we're working C gap pressure like my tackle got beat, and then A gap pressure between my guard and between my tackle. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out in a base, weight's gonna be loaded back. All you're gonna do, it's back-to-back -back movements, but we're gonna be going up, drift back, and throw. So it's like we step up, because I'm getting outside pressure, A gap in my face, oh crap, I gotta step back and then we throw like we're working a route to the left. So that's the first movement. And we're gonna show you how all these should look full speed. You wanna do eight reps of each one of these movements. Now, we're gonna flip it. A gap pressure first, and then C gap pressure second. So you're gonna be here, drift back, step up, throw. The entire time, we are making sure that I'm keeping my weight loaded on my back leg. Your back foot has gotta be under you. Remember, my weight's gotta stay on my back leg so I could rotate my shoulders back when the foot gets down and the hips can lead before this. If you guys are moving in the pocket like this, this is why if you've noticed, I'm not moving with my back foot first. Because guys, when you move back foot first, your weight automatically shifts forward and then I'm not in a good mechanical sequence. So that's why I go front foot first. I suggest if you're anti that, you have a coach that tells you, oh, move back for first try it see how it feels especially with an actual ball i'm telling you right now it's going to make a huge difference just try it just don't don't just take my word for it try it see how it feels now that's the second movement third movement c gap pressure from the right a gap pressure from the right and then throw. So I'm gonna show you how all three of these movements should look full speed back to back. This is a great footwork circuit that you can work without receivers and still be able to work on your throwing mechanics. Now also, fellas, if you are a quarterback and you would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches, we are gonna be coming out to 15 different cities across the country this year for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. We're gonna be coming out to San Francisco, California, Orlando, Florida, Phoenix, Arizona, just to name a few. And then there are 12 other cities that we are gonna to travel to. So guys, if you wanna see if we're coming out to one of your cities, one of your states, and you'd like to travel out, work with us if we're coming to a place near you, check out that second link in the description below. We'd love to have all of you at least one of our off-season training camps. So again, second link in that description below. Now this next drill is going to be something for throwing on the run. So like, let's say you're a right-handed quarterback. Whenever you're throwing on the run, you wanna step in the direction of the throw with your throwing side foot. So let's say I'm throwing something like right towards the camera. I'm in the pocket, I'm in a normal base. I step with my left foot and when my left foot steps, what do I gotta do? I gotta dissociate or separate upper body from lower body so the hips can lead. On the run, you just step with the opposite foot so you can stay on the 
and run. So you're here, you step with your right foot, point your toes at the target, but when that right foot steps, that's when you rotate your shoulders to separate, dissociate, etc. And then when the hand comes through, we kick through so I can stay on the run. Stepping with that throwing side foot is extremely important for your throwing on the run sequence. So we're gonna be on our towel and it's gonna be four jog steps. So you're gonna step with your non-throwing side foot. So for you righties, it's the left foot. For you lefties, it's the right foot. But let's say you're a right and a quarterback. You're gonna be going left, right, left, right. And as soon as you hit that fourth step, that's when you rotate, kick through, and we stay on the run. So this works on your throwing on the run sequence. So again, it's off of a jog. We'll show you full speed in a second how it should look, but it's just one, two, three, four. And then we kick through. So again, show you how this should look, full speed.